Hey guys, GGD here, back with another video. Today, I am doing a tutorial guide for you guys on how to make thumbnails for YouTube. I know this is very highly saturated in the YouTube community, but a lot of people have asked me specifically how I make my my thumbnails. So I will be telling you guys what kind of stuff I do, what kind of techniques I do, what kind of filters, all that kind of jazz, how I do it. There's also some pretty nifty tricks that I've got up my sleeve for making Realm of the Mad God thumbnails to look pretty good. So hopefully this helps you out a bit. Now the program that I use to make my thumbnails isn't probably what you're expecting. It's not Photoshop, it's not paint.net, it's not just regular paint. It's called GIMP. Now the download links for this are going to be in the description so you don't need to worry about that. And basically it's a free to use software that I think can be run on any kind of operating system. So that's pretty awesome. And it's basically like a little bit simplified down version of Photoshop. And I got it a long time ago because I didn't want to pay for Photoshop, but Paint was too simplified for what I wanted to do. And with this, it allows me to do stuff that I wouldn't have normally been able to do on paint.net and all that kind of cool stuff. Now, when you open up GIMP, it'll be pretty straightforward. You'll have like one of these, it'll load after a while. And I've already had this one open and this is what I'll be explaining in a second. But yeah, you'll be basically presented with the screen. It won't have this white thing. You'll have to like make a new one or whatever. And you go file new and you just make whatever borders, width, height, etc. Now, this is actually a modified version of the YouTube's optimum thumbnail size. I've shrunk it down to meet some um, kind of diameters that I like and prefer with the smaller kind of aspect of the thumbnail. And because Realm images in general are pretty small anyway, because it's stuck to this kind of small little screen behind here, I like to use a smaller canvas so that I don't need to enlarge an image too much. And it's just a little bit easier to manage with the pixels and stuff. So copy those diameters if you want, if you're going to do realm thumbnail. And yeah, so this is the optimum dimensions. As you can see, it's pretty nifty. You got some cool features. I couldn't, un I pressed FN there. That was really stupid. But yeah, so this is basically the canvas. And what I usually start off right is with the background. And to get background images, I use footage from the video that I will be playing, etc. But since I've got like literally no footage to show on this, I will be using some pre-recorded footage anyway. And yeah, so I usually look for something that looks pretty cool. I kind of like the looks of the trees. I like the look of that. That looks pretty cool. All right. So the next thing I do is I use snippet tool to take an image of it as you would expect or whatever you can print screen, doesn't really matter. But anything that will basically give you the canvas. Now you can file, save that to your bloody desktop and we'll open it up here. Okay, so it's on my desktop, open with, usually you can right click, edit with GIMP. That's something that you'll want to do once you've installed the program, it's really handy. And then here you go, you've got your, you got your image. So with this, you can control A it and then copy it and then paste it into the optimum thumbnail size. So this is what I usually use, right? So you've got the background, but I don't really like most of this stuff sometimes, so I enlarge it. Now, when you enlarge images on this program, most of the time they will blur because it wants to auto-correct it to the right size. And because of that, you get some really blurry enlarged images. I like to use the scale tool, but for the background, I don't really mind if it blurs a little bit because it's not really significant anyway. Uh, let's see, I reckon that looks pretty pretty good, I reckon. So add to the new layer, so it's its own separate layer from the background. I like to kind of keep things separated. It just, I like it a little bit more. Then I'll most likely add the text. So you click on the text option and you have all these different fonts. If you click on the kind of grid one, you can get a list of them here, but a grid one's, you can just scroll through them a bit better. It's a bit laggy. I scroll all the way to the top and then I use this one for my my text and then you just randomly start typing. It'll be behind the layer currently as you can see because it's underneath it. So you just drag that above it and then here you go. So that's the text. I will control A that, enlarge it up a bit and I'll make it a white color because that's just the way I do stuff, you know? Yeah, so if there's the white text, there's the background sorted and now we've got to get the character sprite. Now this is pretty cool because there's a little nifty trick because these sprites are so small, when you enlarge them, they blur really, really badly, and that's not a good thing. So what I do for getting images, it includes items, uh, characters, pets, all that kind of stuff, all the images you can find on Realm. 
when you zoom up on them they actually become really crisp and enlarged for some reason don't ask me why it's just a little bit silly but sometimes so i'm going to just add in my priests and what i'll do is i'll get the snippet tool again we'll just make a new one because we don't want that take a little bit of an image of the priest doesn't really matter it's a really small image as you can see we'll save it to the desktop again we'll just name it number one because who cares and we'll close out of that okay oh why does my desktop always do that i don't know but here we go so here's the image we'll open that one up with gimp and it is so small now what i'll do right is because when you zoom in it's look at how crisp that is right and you want that to be in the thumbnail but it will blur and i'll show you exactly what why it's like that in a second. So I've got the selection tool here and it basically allows me to kind of just get rid of this stuff. The checkered background means it's translucent, so that's good. If it's not translucent, just right click and then add alpha channel. That'll give you the translucent background and convert it to a PNG file, which is pretty dope. But yeah, so basically I've got the select tool. I'm highlighting all the bits outside the um, character sprite. I've done this a lot, so usually it's quite simple. And because the image is so small, it means the pixels are very large and it's just, it kind of locks onto our pixel. So you can see like bam, bam, bam. It's like kind of locking. But here we go, we've got the big sprite. Now, normally, right, what you would expect to do is just select the image, copy it, and then you transfer onto the thumbnail and you paste. But look at how tiny that is. Make sure to add to the new layer. Otherwise, it will just blend into the layer below it, which is stupid. So we've got the image. All right, now let's blow it up and see what happens. I've got it. Make sure it's locked here so you don't, you can't change the dimensions because if it's unlocked, you'll get like distortions like that, right? So you want to lock it and then you want to enlarge it. Now that looks pretty good, right? Like it's not really too much, but look at how blurry that is. Like what on earth? Why did it do that? It's because of this really stupid thing, all right? I don't know why it does that. But the way that I bypass this is basically on the original image, the really small one, you can actually change the image dimensions. Now, go back to the original image that you used, so the really small one. And basically with this one, you can actually enlarge the image using the scale image tool. So you can go image, scale image, and then here you go. I usually scale it up to about 400-ish because that's the way I like it, you know? And yeah, so the interpolation is where the problem arises, right? So this is the way it interpolates the image as it expands outwards. If you do none, nothing will happen. If you do linear, I don't know what, but these are just weird things that you want to stay away from. Make sure it's none. If I leave it at cubic like this, it'll scale and the exact same problem will arise, right? So with this, you get image, scale image, scale it up to around about 400 because the canvas size that I used is optimal for this kind of scale of image. Make sure it's none, scale it, and bam, look at how crisp that is, right? So again, you can either select it with this tool again, or I like to use the magic wand. Basically, it highlights everything around the image. So if I were to copy this, it would actually copy all of the translucent stuff. To reverse this, you press Control I, and then it will only select the image of the priest. Control C to copy it or whatever the equivalent is for the max or whatever. I don't know. And then you paste it. Bam. Look at that. So much more crisp. And it looks pretty dope. So you can see the comparison there between the two. Really bad. Much better quality. And you can just delete that layer. Now, because it's already large, scaling it down won't affect it too much. And you can get a nice crisp image. All right. So that's cool. And yeah, I usually put something else or like an item or a white bag maybe just there. But for the purpose of this video, I'll keep it nice and short for you guys because I'm sure you don't give a crap. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how I get my images. It applies to anything. You can get the images off your actual Flash Player or on in browser or on Steam. You can just get them directly off there. Or you can use a method that I like to use, which is going onto Realmi, finding images, and then just cropping them from there directly, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now for the final step of what I like to use in my thumbnails, and it's called a drop shadow. Now this makes images pop out of the kind of image itself and makes them stand out. And it's really useful and I really like to use it. In fact, you'll see it in basically every single one of my thumbnails for a good few years. So that's pretty cool. To do this, what you do is you go into filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, and then here you get a little menu. 
it'll use, sometimes it appears just here, you've got to click on it and then you can just open it back up again. The offset Y and X functions basically mean how far away it's going to be from the image. Set this to zero so it lies directly beneath the image. That way the shadow radiates centrally out of the image itself. I like to set the blur radius to 30 for this canvas size. You can increase that depending on what kind of canvas size you're using. It doesn't really matter. Mess around with it. See what works best for you. This will be the color of the shadow. I like to set it to black, obviously, because all realm sprites, images, and all that stuff have shadows if you look carefully, and that's what makes them that unique kind of a look. Turn off allow resizing because if you were to keep this on, as the shadow radiates out from the image, it'll actually expand the canvas size to accommodate for that. So turn off allow resizing and then change the opacity up to 100% or 100, I'm not sure if that's a percentage or not, and then click OK. As you can see, it added this nice little shadow underneath. If I were to hide this image, that's what it will look like. It's a little bit bigger than the, um, the priest itself, which is why it gives it a nice, that nice little shadow. You can either keep the layers here separate, so you can have just the shadow image and the priest image is separate, so I can turn off the shadow as you can see, or alternately you can merge them together, which is something that I do because I like to be able to move the images around and like mess around to see what kind of works best for whatever I'm trying to do. So as you can see, here we go. It's got the nice little shadow effect going on and that is something I use a lot. In fact, I use it in every one of my thumbnails so yeah, the same thing can be applied to the text. Just select the layers that you want. So I want to put a drop shadow on the text layer, which is really stupidly worded. Filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. The original settings that you did for the priest will still be there, which is pretty cool. And you just go bam, and there we go. It allows the text to pop on screen. Because if you have a merging of colors, so if, you, if I had a background that was white and black, if you put white text, it'll be really hard to read because obviously parts of it will be kind of invisible because they blend into the background. If you add a drop shadow, it removes that completely. So if I were to hide this background layer, look, you can still see it. But if I were to hide this, you can't see it at all. So it basically just outlines the edges. So I can even have a white text on a white background. And that is something that I like a lot because if you have a mixture of colors in your background, then you can see the text really clearly. What I like to do for good measure is actually add a second one on top of it, but this time I put a blur radius of 50, so it just makes it a little bit more kind of standing out and you can see it a bit better. Now I merge those together as I just normally do, and bam, we have got a damn good looking title. I'll put that above the priest because now you can see that the shadow is there and it just looks way better, all right? So that is how I do the drop shadow and it's something that makes my thumbnails look kind of nicer, I reckon. I don't know, you can do it however you want, I guess. Now for the final touching, blurring. Blurring is something that I do a lot now or I've started doing it a little bit more because I want the images on the front of the background to be a lot more obvious. And to do this, I've selected the background layer. You go onto filters you go on to blur, that's a standard blur, it'll just blur it like temporarily and you can keep doing that and progressively layer up the blur or you can alternately go filters, blur, Gorgasian, Gorgian, bl oh, <laughs> Gorgian blur and then it'll give you a little sample of the image and these are the settings that it's set to. You can increase this and that'll, that'll be like kind of what it will look like and then bam, as you can see, it's blurred the background. That's something that I've added on a little bit more these days, and that's really how I make my images. You can customize it however you want. You can change the background. You can change the images. You can chuck a white bag in there. You can do whatever you want, but this is how I make my thumbnails. I hope the enlarging images function to like get the nice crisp looking sprites helps. I know it's definitely been useful for me because I would have thumbnails where I'd chuck a white bag on, try and enlarge it, and it'd be the most blurry thing I've ever seen in my life. So I've changed that now, which is so much better for my thumbnails, and I like it a lot. And the text is just nice. I like it with the drop shadow. Pretty much drop shadow makes anything look really cool. But yeah, so that is how I make my thumbnails. And then the last thing to do is to export it, and you can save that wherever you want on your damn computer all right so i hope that helped you guys out a little bit and i hope that it will help you guys fix any problems that you're having with your thumbnails i know i've seen quite a few thumbnails out there with blurry images in the thumbnail not to point any fingers but i have seen them it looks fine but it's just this solves that problem if you've been wanting to solve it and yeah 
I'm hoping that the blur and the drop shadow effects especially will add that extra emphasis to your thumbnails, make them look a little bit more cool, I guess. You don't have to use them, do it however you want. Make your thumbnails pretty unique to you. That's all I, that's all the advice I can give you, all right? But if you enjoyed it, give it a like. It really means a lot to me and I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.